Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to check the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano VTX. This review is going to be splitted into two parts. On the first one, I'm going to go over the VTX features, show you how to set it up and also measure its output strength. And on the second one, I'm going to head outdoors and see how it's going to perform. Inside the package, along with the VTX, you're getting a linear antenna with a ULFL connector, some silicon wires, and a clear shrink tube. The VTX itself is probably the world's smallest 5.8 GHz VTX. It supports 37 channels, features smart audio 2.1, which unfortunately at the moment of shooting this video is not yet supported by Betaflight. In addition, even though it is extremely small, its output strength is selectable between 25, 100, and 400 millivolts. The weight of the VTX is only 0.89 grams, so it's even lighter than its previous version, and by the way, as you can see, the configuration button is already pre-soldered to the board, so unlike the previous version, you won't have to solder it yourself. Here you can see how the Unify Pro 32 looks next to the Unify Pro, so it is extremely small, and its outer dimensions are just 15.4 by 12.7 by 2.2 millimeters. The operating voltage of the VTX is 5 volts, so over here you can find the plus 5 volts in, ground, plus 5 volts out and ground for the camera, video in, smart audio, over here you can find the configuration button and I recommend not to press it with a too sharp object because otherwise you might damage it and finally over here you can find a UFL connector for the antenna. Configuring the frequency and the output strength of the VTX can be either done using the configuration button or the smart audio pad. As I mentioned before, at the moment of shooting this video, Betaflight does not support the Smart Audio 2.1 protocol, so you'll be able to utilize the Smart Audio feature only by connecting this pad to a free channel on your Crossfire receiver, and then you'll be able to configure the VTX through the Lua script, but you have to make sure that your Crossfire transmitter is flashed to version 2.88 or above. Now when researching this VTX, I bumped into AJ Christensen video where he shows how to configure this VTX using the smart audio feature on Betaflight and I reached out to him and he was kind enough to send me a custom version of Omnibus F4 where it's possible to set the VTX using the smart audio feature. So first of all, I would like to thank AJ for helping me out and I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description box of this video. The version he sent me is not 100% working and you can set the output strength of the VTX only to 25 and 100 millivolts, but hopefully they are going to figure it out and you'll be able to configure this VTX using Betaflight without any problems. Another solution that was suggested is to put a 10k resistor between the smart audio pad and the ground, but I tried it and unfortunately it didn't work. When you get in the VTX it is locked to 25 millivolts. So in order to unlock it, you'll need to first enter the channel selection mode by long pressing the configuration button for three seconds. So just hold it, release it, and you can see that now the red LED flashed once, which means that now we can set the channel by short pressing the configuration button. Then when you're under this mode, long press the configuration button for about 20 seconds, release it, and if the red LED is going to flash three times, it means that the VTX has been unlocked. After the VTX has been unlocked, you'll be able to set the output strength between the three available options. So first, let's enter the channel selection mode, then move to the band selection mode, again by long pressing the configuration button for three seconds, release it, and once the red LED flashes twice, you'll be able to set the band between the five available options, and again, long press this button for three seconds, release it, and you can see that now the red LED flashes three times, which means that now we can set the output strength between the three available options. You can see that now the blue LED flashes once, which means that now it's on 25 millivolts. By short pressing it, the blue LED indicator is going to flash twice, which means that now it is set to 100 millivolts. And if I'm going to press it again, the blue LED is going to flash three times, which means that it now set to 400 millivolts. In order to save your selection, long press this button for 5 seconds, and now the settings were saved. Now by the way, even when the VTX is set to 25 milliwatts, it gets extremely hot and you won't be able to hold it in your hand, and when it's set to 400 milliwatts, it gets even hotter of course, and the temperature at the hottest point is around 60 degrees Celsius. 
Now I'm going to measure the output strength of the VTX. When the VTX is set to 25 millivolts, I'm getting around 25 millivolts. When it's set to 100 millivolts, I'm getting around 160 millivolts. I manually set it to 400 millivolts using the configuration button and I'm getting around 300 millivolts. In the second part of this review, I headed outdoors and tested the TBS Unify Pro 22 using the different output strength options. And as you're about to see, in my opinion, it performed quite well. As for an antenna, I used the Furious FPV RUFL antenna, which is a pretty good option if you're going to get the TBS Unify Pro 32 VTX, because if you're going to get this extremely light VTX, you probably want to keep your build as light as you can. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the TBS Unify Pro 32 VTX, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.